again, we'd like to welcome Judith Chow to our show for an interview today. It's very exciting. Um, I haven't known you very long, but what I've known, I've really appreciated. And um, so here we are. Uh, Judith, what, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Like, you know, how did you start writing and where are you from? And um, a few details about, about you. Yeah. Um, well, I started writing uh, pretty late in life um, when I was um, maybe in my late 30s. Um, and um, it really happened kind of um, serendipitously, you could say. Um, I had at that point thought that I wanted to be a feature article journalist. Um, uh -huh. And I just didn't know how to get started. And um, one day I saw this ad for a poetry workshop at a women's center in Montpelier. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know about poetry, but uh, it'll probably loosen me up. And so I went and I, you know, I just will never forget going home from that, that first day and saying to myself, uh, I've been waiting for this my whole life. And the person who was teaching it, Nadelle Fishman, was so good. She sort of stayed with me after the eight weeks were done. She's now, you know, became a mentor and now is a dear friend, has remained a dear friend ever since. Um, and from there, I went on to um, uh, get an MFA at um, the, with this program that morphed um, in where it was located from Vermont College to Norwich University and then to what it is now. When I graduated, it was Norwich University. Um, yeah. And is that what brought you to Vermont or were you here previous to that? No, I was here for quite a while before that. Um, okay. Again, I seem to bumble my way through into just about everything. Um, so <laughs> um, uh, it was um, the very early 70s and um, I didn't have a job for the summer. Uh, I was going to school at the University of Toronto. I came here, stumbled on a job. Uh, on the long trail as a caretaker, um, said to, I was married at that point to a man and, um, and we, you know, we just said to ourselves, we just never want to leave here. Um, so, you know, I dropped out of school and came here. Uh, so I had been, I had, and, you know, then got an undergraduate in the, finished my, my undergraduate studies at Goddard in their low residency program. Uh, and and uh, you're married, right? Now I am, I am married to my darling Lisa, to whom my book Minnow is dedicated. Yes, uh, yes. Um, we got together in you know oh approximately two thousand and three ish, um, and uh, have been married since it's been legal to be since it's legal. Very good. So I I'm gonna um. I'm going to read um, what Alison Prine, who is another uh, well-established writer uh, in Vermont. Um, and then I would like you to read Minnow, which I, I really think it, it's the title and, and your first poem in here. And uh, here's the book. And um, uh, Judith's poems is sensuous, vivid, and richly detailed. Minnow wakes us to the urgency and grace of natural landscapes and intimate connections. And I think Minnow for me really spoke to um, the times we're in right now, sorrow. There seems to be a lot of real sorrow in the world and, and the poem talks about that, but it also talks about how we can uplift ourselves and how we can uh, be positive. So if you wouldn't mind reading that poem. Sure. The poem Minnow. Covered in mist, cover of night, the serious air, cold fog swirling around us, the minnow that lingered while we talked, dirt surrounding us, soot everywhere, the path fringed with fungus. It takes something serious, Something drastic, like leaving your bed, like finding a stick to really change. 
All night we stayed covered, cold, the path frilled with fungus, soot all around us, and still we smelled wintergreen. We smelled apple and berry. We made a bed that was soft in the night, the serious night. We touched hands and our breath was swirling. Sticks snapped, turtles fled. We looked different to each other and smelled. It was good. It was serious. The path was fragrant with fungus. We slid a stick in the water and talked. The minnow we saw disappearing. Thank you. That's really beautiful. And you have a first collection too that people can can um, can still get from you. Your first collection from me. It's out of print. The publisher went out of business a long time ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I have some. Yeah. Okay. So um, books of huh? also um, books of translation too. I, I translate um, with a with a friend um, from Montpelier, Michiko Oishi, who writes uh, in Japanese and then does the, um, the first translation and together we work on um, honing on, the, uh, on really um, making those poems into poems in the English language. Uh, and we have two books, of, two books of those that are published as well. Great. And um, were you always into the natural world? I mean, I, your poems just are, are really to me like a combination of you know, talking about real feelings and emotions in the natural world. And so were you always interested in the natural world and how, you know, to interpret that as, you know, into your writing, into your work? I suppose you could say so. Um, I grew up in Buffalo in a very urban setting. Um, but my, but actually my favorite place in the entire city was the zoo. And um, that connection with um, more than human. Um, and, you know, I have, I have memories of places like the side of the railroad, uh, you know, bank, where the wild, where the milkweed was, you know, out of the mud in a construction site. I mean, those are the urban versions, but yes, those are my strong memories. And then, of course, when I came here, it was overwhelmingly amazing to me. I know, I found that too. Um, so you came directly from Buffalo with your ex to mm -hmm. Vermont. Yes. Um, and then um, had a series of pretty, I, I feel like I've had wonderful work um, in my life. Well, one of the first jobs that I really loved was, um, I was a typist B uh, for the state. And I was working for uh, what, this was pre-OSHA. I was working for what was then the Division of Industrial Hygiene and working with a bunch of people who were just so labor positive and so proud of uh, making conditions for the dusty trades, you know, granite, slate, marble, asbestos, talc, clay, um, making that safer for workers. Um, and I, it was, um, it was pretty inspiring work um, to be part of that, to learn how to take x-rays and meet people from all over. And um, it was in Barrie to, to learn from the person who was supervising me about Barrie's rich uh, ethnic heritage. Um, and uh, a bit later, after I got my MFA, I, I became, I taught in a number of, situ number of circumstances, one of which was, um, a, an arts-based senior center in Morrisville called the Out and About Center. And that was, I did that for 12 years, leading um, first writing workshops. And then um, as the funding changed for senior centers and people um, with more profound disabilities um, were there, we changed to what we were doing to storytelling. Um, and I just, again, it was such deep cultural learning for me. Um, in terms of um, getting to know people who had lived through all the enormous changes of the 20th century and what was essentially Northern Appalachia, making their livings in subsistence farming and uh, logging and mining. Um, and I, then I was also teaching non-traditional college-age students uh, through, 
again, that set of programs, undergraduate programs that were at Vermont College and then Norwich University and then Uni Union Institute. Um, and, and lastly, my uh, such beloved work and such deep learning for me um, of being the executive director of what was then VSA Vermont um, and, be, and thankfully now has a better name, much better name of Inclusive Arts Vermont, <laughs> um, which is engaged in arts and disability and um, it was just such incredible, joyful work. And I and I know from talking to you that your you know your Jewish community has always been a big part of your your life and and your work and um, and your being in the universe. Um, how did that have an effect on your writing? Um, I, I know you had a reading at the synagogue there, um, yeah. and and how has all of that influenced you? Do you feel? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's um, certainly profound. Um, I grew up in a family that not only was highly identified um, Jewishly, and but was part of a really uh, intense immigrant and uh, refugee community. Um, uh, one part of my family um, were Holocaust survivors. Um, and, um, I also experienced some uh, quite a bit of death early on in my life, and that um, led me to, you know, the kind of existential questions that yeah. children and people of all ages struggle with. So the combination of sort of the cultural, ethical um, background that I grew up in, you know, again, highly labor positive, um, labor oriented, that sort of um, connection uh, uh, and you know the spiritual mm, questioning um, is and the community just the, just I really love the community I also love you know the same way I love what people do that is richly uh, engaged you know everything from cooking to singing to um, making beautiful ceremonies. I just, it's to me, the, it's just part of the way um, I love what human beings can do. Um, and so the poems in Minnow, um, you know, there's quite a few of them that reference uh, Jewish tradition in one way or another. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, it's, um, it's part of my, the way I am in the your, world, you know? Your whole, yeah, your, your inner self, maybe your, yeah. So I would like, I would like to request that you read one last poem before we have to leave. And I want to thank you for being here. It's wonderful to see you. And um, thank you so we'll see much. you again So. Well, Linda, thank you so much for your wonderful show in the first place. and. Um, for being your wonderful, inquisitive, positive self. I'm, thank you. This is really, it's really fun to be here with you. I'm really honored. Um, I think I'll read the point. My neighbor's footprints, frozen on yesterday's path, softened today to slush, and even the leash lies slack in my hand. The beach is bare again, the gulping surf testy in its winter thaw. The sand here and there a sudden soup. Grace and drizzle have left us the place to ourselves. I think I must be late, considering death and purpose, the sky and all that's beyond bearing. The dog races to a lingering gull. The clouds begin to break, apricot at their evening edges, then deepening to pink. It seems a long wait till spring and the possible. You know how it is, each year settling in unfamiliar uncertain. In a few months, the sun on our arms will shed a layer, put our backs into our paddles. There's always a point, the boat slipping from shore, the air sharp, the lake still too cold for swimming, woods full of moss and fungus, when we're tugged into a bewildered hope with nothing beneath us but a whisper. 
Thank you, Judith. That was wonderful. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you so much, Linda. Bye.